On this Hall's straight tailpiece, I will show you the method I use to manipulate it. Now it says Hall safe and lock on the safe. It could also say Herring Hall Marvin. You'll see a T handle and on a dial cap it says Hall's safe and lock with a 100 number dial. Some of these come with a 130 number dial. Now it's easy to tell a straight tailpiece lock by turning the handle and turning the dial. Of course it will bind up because the tailpiece is trying to be forced into the wheel pack. So the tools we're going to use is different from our standard manipulation. Is I'm going to grab some tape, a handle I made, a bungee cord or a spring, and a pointer. Uh, these are the tools we need to manipulate this safe. Okay, I'm going to start by taping my handle uh, onto the handle of the safe. All this does is it makes it a little bit more convenient uh, when you're manipulating it because you will be turning that handle quite a bit through in the process. It makes it much more comfortable. But of course, you can come up with any type of a uh, handle when you do this. All right now I'm going to hook on my bungee cord and I'm just going to strap this to the bottom of the caster of the safe. Now the reason I'm doing this is you need constant pressure all the time to be the same when you're manipulating this lock. If you do it by hand, you could always exert different types of pressure which could give you different readings. So to get the consistent readings, you want the same type of pressure. Okay, now I'm gonna duct tape my pointer to the other side of the handle. At least a six to eight inch length uh, pointer you need. Okay, I'm gonna take my magnetic dial ring, stick it to the safe. I'm gonna line it up so the uh, pointer is at zero. And the longer the pointer, the better the readings you will get. Okay, I wanna get out my pen and paper here to write down some numbers. Now the driver wheel has false gates around it. There's nine false gates and one true gate. So I just want to go around the dial right now. I'm not even paying attention to my pointer. And I just want to find out what numbers all the false gates are at and write them down. On this one, it happens to be all on tens. So like 10, 20, 30, 40, all has false gates. And I'm just going to clamp my pointer here, make it a little bit tighter so it doesn't move on me. Okay, as you can see, that's my pointer set up. And here's how I have the pointer taped to the handle, and there's my external handle for using, and the uh, bungee cord hooked to the bottom of the caster. So I'm all set, ready to manipulate. Okay, let's begin. Now what I want to do is look for the best reading in all these false gates, and that's the reading I'm going to use. It doesn't matter if it's a true gate or not, I just want to find the best reading of the driver gate. Okay, now when that needle moves to the left, that's a better reading. So that's what we're looking for. Oh, and right there, look at that. Okay, that looks pretty good. I go to the next one, it's, okay, back to a high reading again. Okay, so it looks like I can use that one number that I found as our start uh, number. So let's see what that was here. Okay, I think that, yeah, that was 30. Now I'm just gonna check it again real quick, going in the other direction. It's 20, come around to 30, and let's take a look at the pointer. And yes, the pointer is to the left of my zero. So that's the number I'm gonna park my driver gate throughout the process. Now the way I'm gonna begin is I'm gonna move all wheels left and park the first wheel at, let's say 30, it's just any number. And I'm only gonna be moving wheels two and three now around right. And of course, coming back to my driver gate number, which is 30. And I'm gonna test the wheel pack. So I'm gonna be searching for wheels two and three right now. And I'm gonna go two and a half numbers. Okay, we're moving the dial to the right, coming back to the driver gate. And 12, check it. All right, we'll go to 10 and check it. And, oh, look at that. Oh, that looked pretty good. Okay, we'll go to 7.5 and that's oh, still pretty good. And we'll go to my five. It looks like, oh, it's back to a high reading again. And how about 2.5? Okay, high reading. Okay, we got something now between those readings. So now let's take it one number at a time and see if we can zero in on uh, a possible gate. Okay, let's start uh, close to where we were at. Let's say, I don't know, 13. Okay, check it. No, still high there. Let's go to 12. Take a look. 
11. All right, still high. Let's go to 10. And, oh, looking better there. Okay, 10. We can write 10 down. How about 9? 9, nine looked good, too. 8. We'll check 8. Oh, 8 looks pretty good. 7. And, yeah, that looks pretty good, too. 6. Let's see what we got for 6. Okay, that's starting to go a little high, but it's still good. Okay, now I'm going to write down what I had. I found 9 going right. Now I had 7, 8. 9 and 10 uh, basically is real good numbers. So I'm going to take kind of like the middle number, which is 9, and use that as a gate. Now we just have to check to see if it's on wheel 2 or 3. Now the way I do that is I'm only going to run one wheel at a time through those numbers and see which one gives me a better reading. So I'm going to go to 30 for the first wheel. I'm going to go three times right to 9. And I'm going to pick number 3 as, let's say, an arbitrary number like 90. And we're going to check that and see what kind of reading we have. That looks good for wheel two. Okay, we're going to move a little ahead in time here. I didn't find any reading on wheel three. So I will use number nine as a gate for wheel two. I then moved wheel one by itself. And I put wheel two on number nine. And I put wheel three on a low spot. And then I found a reading. So now I'm going to move wheel three and see if we can find something on wheel three. And as you can see, I'm just moving every two and a half numbers and coming back and taking a reading. Oh, look at that. Wow. I mean, that almost looked like it wanted to open there. Okay. Uh, let's check that and see. Let's zero in on that number. And it came out to be actually, I think it was like 56 here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I found 31 on wheel one as a good reading. And wheel two was number nine that we found before, remember when we did it? And now I just found 56. But it still didn't open. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna run the driver gate around and see if we can find a better reading for the driver gate. Uh, possibly that wasn't a true gate that I was in. So we're gonna take that now and run it. And if you look at the pointer, it's way past the zero, which is really good. Which means the tailpiece is entering the wheel gates further. Okay, check the next number and... Wow, look at that, all right. Yep, that's it. The driver gate was on a false gate. And that's your basic method of manipulating a straight tailpiece. That's something, that is something. Now, if you, if you open it up, boss, I told you I left the combination in here. And there it is. <laughs> <laughs>